Welcome back to the All Seas channel. Today, I'm going to be doing something just a little bit different. I'm going to be uh, doing some service on my service vehicle. And it's something that will directly relate to you if you own an RV. But first things first, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you have not. Ring that notification bell and leave comments. Do all that stuff down there. You know how to do this. Come on. Um, today, I'm uh, going to be servicing my batteries. If you've watched my videos on uh, my truck tour, you know that I have an inverter in my truck so that I can have AC power on site. Uh, I really need my AC power tomorrow for a job. <laughs> so that's what prompted me to finally service my batteries. Um, something I've been neglecting for a while. The performance of my inverter has just been going steadily downhill for the last few months and uh, should have done this a long time ago. Uh, I hope by putting some water in these batteries, I kind of bring them back to life. Because um, not only does the performance of my inverter been going downhill, but actually I tested, uh, you know, I've got those test ports there on the back of my truck where I test furnaces and stuff. And I actually just put my meter on that the other day and it's like right at 12 volts. And uh, I've got two Series 31 deep cycle batteries in this that run the inverter, charge off the vehicle and all that so those things should be in a lot better shape than that they're not that old uh, but i have i mean i'll admit i have neglected them i should have been i should have put water in them months ago so uh we're gonna do that right now uh first off safety anytime you're fooling with a battery man wear some safety glasses you only only get to blow up you only get to have a a, a lead acid battery blow up in your face one time and um, if it does, chances are you're going to be blind in at least one eye, if not both. So just put your, put your peepers on. That's the least you can do. Goggles probably wouldn't be a bad idea because um, uh, anytime you store energy, I don't care if it's in a battery, a spring, or anything else that you can store any energy in, you got to be careful. So, because when you store energy, <laughs> when it lets go, bad things can happen. So we're gonna get started. Here we go. I've always been told that you put only distilled water in a battery. I don't know, maybe one of you guys know a better trick. One of you gals, um, better way to maintain your batteries, but I know just don't put tap water in them. Just too many minerals and chemicals and stuff in that. I always use distilled water. Bonnie's gonna help. Aren't you Bonnie? She doesn't even know what we're doing, but she's here to help anyway. All right, let's get started. My deep cycle batteries for my inverter live right here. This vehicle has actually four batteries because it's a diesel. So it has two chassis batteries and this would be just like your RV. I've got two coach batteries and they live right here, like I said. Uh, Gonna just do a quick visual inspection here. To see, make sure there ain't nothing all crusty. Oh uh, man, one of those batteries is pretty crusty. Looks like it's been boiling water out of it pretty good. The other battery looks good. And that's really weird because they're wired in series. Because they both get charged at the exact same time for the exact same source. So let me see if uh, let me see if we can see that. Can you see that back battery? See the terminal's pretty crusty. The whole battery's wet. That's weird. This battery here in front is just dry and no crusties. But that one back there doesn't work look very good. Like I say, this is this is the exact same setup that most of you will have on your RV. Um, you're gonna have two coach batteries, and if you got a diesel coach, you've got at least two chassis batteries, so. Now, I cannot get to the top of those batteries well enough to put water in them, so I actually have to pull those batteries out. Um, and the, the smartest thing to do is either draw a diagram or take really good pictures so that you know how those wires go back. Because trust me, I mean, when you get started, it might look like, well, this is a piece of cake. I'll just take the batteries out, service them, put them back, and then you start putting them back and go, oh, geez, I don't, where's this wire go? Is this, is this right? Does it go here? Before you know, you know, hook something up backwards and it doesn't hurt something. So, um, 
going to uh, take these batteries out uh, and see what's going on. That, that one back there may not be any good, which is not good because it's not that old. Year, year and a half maybe. Going to use the appropriate size wrench and just be real careful. Don't, don't touch nothing. <laughs> be, be aware of where the other end of your wrench is at. So, I mean, to the very least, you can cause a big spark, scare yourself half to death, and jump and hit your hand on something, and bleed, and not like I have any experience with anything like that, but because I don't. <laughs> oh, mercy. All right. comes the front battery. <laughs> Who in the world designed this battery box? Oh, yeah, that was me. Hey, the batteries don't fall out. I guess I should have added too. If you've got completely maintenance free batteries or you've got gel batteries or something like that, just disregard this video because it does not pertain to you. This is only for wet lead acid batteries. This one's pretty low on water. Let's see if I can show you. So the water and the acid should be right at the bottom of the little tubes here and they're a little bit low so I'm going to add a little bit of water take our distilled water try not to get any trash in there any dirt stuff just very very slowly probably wouldn't hurt to have a funnel it's only going to take only going to take a couple ounces so I'm thinking that my, my decreased performance in my inverter is probably due to that battery back there. I bet that battery's going bad. It's like I say, it's terrible because that battery's not very old. Put our caps back on. This battery is done. All right, so I'm gonna get the other battery out. I could probably should have mentioned too that any of the liquid do not get that liquid on your clothes. If you do, you might as well throw them clothes away because they're going to fall apart in the next few weeks, in the next couple weeks. So here's the back battery. Like I say, it is all wet on top. Yeah, July 2019. So yeah, these batteries are just barely a year old. And this is middle of October 2020. And this rag that I'm using will be thrown away. Get these caps off, see how low this one is. Not all that low. What you don't want to see is when you look down in here, you don't want to see your, uh, your plates, the, the internals of the battery. Um, so this one is not all that low either. So I'd say this battery's going bad on me. I've got a load tester. So I'm gonna go get that load tester. And check these batteries. Cause they should be fully charged. Cause I drove the van this morning. This is taking a little bit more water. But not a crazy amount. I kind of thought as bad as these batteries were, their performance was getting, that I'd find some, a dry cell or two. So let me, let me go get my battery tester. This is a battery load tester. You, uh, you squeeze this switch and it actually loads the battery. And it's, and it's showing, showing borderline, border, 
it's showing borderline weak it is just barely in the green Let's see what this battery over here looks like this battery is much better can you see that thing getting red inside that's the load it's actually just a heating element actually that battery is right down down near uh, weak also that's how a load tester works. It puts a load on the battery. Most load testers are just heaters. Well, yeah, all right, that battery, neither one of them really shows like they're bad. Neither one were very low on water, so I'm gonna clean everything up real good. Battery terminals and my battery cables with a bar brush. I've got some uh, special battery corrosion anti corrosion stuff to spray on these when I get done because I don't think I did that before because I just didn't think I'd have a problem I mean these batteries are new so I don't know we're gonna get them cleaned up here now, this is where you really have to be careful about where you're you're flipping this stuff because you'll flip it back on you get it on your clothes and ruin your clothes so. Clean these terminals up real good. Cause, um, just like in your RV, I'm only using these um, threaded posts. I'm not using these. You know, one of these posts looks like it had some paint on it. It almost looks like it. Uh, May not have been making good contact because of the paint. It does have some kind of paint or something on it. Maybe that was my issue. Maybe that's why this battery was, uh, seemed like it was blowing the water out of it. Let's take my trusty knife and clean that paint off or whatever that is. All right, that looks much better. Now, I know you're not going to be able to see, but I'm going to do. I'll try and let you see. I'm gonna do my, I'm gonna do my battery cable ends too. Wire brush, shine them up nice so the copper's showing again. Cause these two cables back here are pretty crusty. I'm actually gonna take my knife and scrape around on those terminals a little bit. Just so I make sure I get all the crusties off. Alright, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna switch these batteries. I'm gonna put the one that was on the outside on the inside. The one that was on the inside on the outside. Makes sense, right? Because I'm gonna switch them. Should have showed the before and after. Tell you what, I'll show you on the other one. Those nice and shined up. Okay, here's a here's a before. See the green crusties? This end don't look too bad because this was on the other battery. This was on the battery that was wet. So let me shine it up a little bit and I'll show you.
that was the end that was pretty crusty looks a lot better now actually got a little bit more crust on this side and need to scrape off with my knife all right that looks good now all right got all four nuts back on the studs on the batteries now we're gonna get them tightened up very carefully so as we don't touch nothing don't touch two posts at the same time otherwise you will melt a wrench and you have the potential to blow that battery up lead acid battery the gas coming off of lead acid battery is pretty explosive you just catch one just wrong it will blow up seen it many times all right finished product looks a lot better i'm gonna get that spray and put on them and i'll show you that real quick and then we're gonna wrap this one up looks like i'm gonna have to take a ups break uh, i don't know what he's got for me but apparently he has something for me can you see the brown truck I don't think that's my normal driver. Anyhow, let's go see what the let's go see what the big brown truck's got for us today. Hopefully, it'll be some more than parts we've been waiting on for months. That'd be awesome. He did bring me a back order part, J box for Coleman air conditioners. I've only been waiting on that for like a month, and it's uh, not for a customer. It's just to restock my truck because I used mine earlier this year and just got the replacement. I bought this can of battery terminal protector I really I don't think I bought two maybe this is my second can but this is all I've used for 20 years or more probably surely again this is my second can because I use this stuff all over the place when I want I want something not to corrode uh, electrical connections especially this is this is my go-to stuff um, this stuff's awesome a little bit messy but it's awesome we're just going to hose down all of our connections in here real good. Metal can, be sure you don't touch anything that you don't want to. Because it wouldn't surprise me if this stuff is uh, not flammable. That, <laughs> that would be exciting, huh? You have it. Uh, I don't know if it's going to make things better. Can't make things worse. Uh, Dirty terminals on a battery can cause you a lot of grief. So uh, we're gonna see, like I say, I've got, I really need my inverter tomorrow for a job and uh, we're gonna see how it works. So, hey, if you've made it this far, thanks for watching. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe, go down there and do all that stuff. Ring the notification bell, leave us a comment. Um, and uh, if you wanna help out financially with this channel, uh, we have a Patreon account the tabs on the uh, on my home page and uh, uh, just uh, go there and help out you don't feel like you need to but if you'd like to we'd really appreciate it uh, I am not gonna go down the road and fix another one because it's 530 here and uh, I'm already at home so y'all have a fantastic day I'm just gonna kind of take it easy this evening catch you later little bonus footage did I forget anything? Uh, does anybody out there have better ideas or better ways of doing things? Uh, leave a comment. Let's start a discussion. Um, everybody's, everybody's got opinions, so let's hear yours. See y'all later.